Well, it looks like Sandrone the Marionette is in fact in Fontaine. This isn't 100% sure, but it's about 99.9% .9 sure. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down some world quests that tease the marionette. Now in 4.2, we got a new world quest called Questioning the Melazine and the Answering Machine. And this hints towards a new Harbinger, but we also got a world quest about the Nartsusen Korntz Institute. Now that's a tongue twister and a mouthful, so I'm going to be referring to this institute as just the Secret Society of Fontaine. So remember, the Nartsusen Korntz, hope I'm pronouncing that right, that institute that's been around for over 500 years in Fontaine, I'm going to refer to as the Secret Institute. Just much easier to remember. So the Secret Institute of Fontaine. So, let's talk about Sandrone. To go over these world quests, we're gonna do in a minute, but what do we know about her already? Stuff that we can just know right off the top of our head. Well, her aesthetic, she already looks like she's Fontaine. Everybody's been wondering where she's gonna come up. She's got a huge automaton that carries her around, and obviously we're in Fontaine, look around. There's mechanisms everywhere. And she's probably one of the best engineers and mechanics in Tevet. And Fontaine is the industrial capital of the world. So it makes sense she'd be from Fontaine already. Her Fatui symbol or constellation is this puppet. And both Child and Skatamuch say that she's got a very dull and angry, bitter personality. And that she's so engrossed in her research and work. That's what she does. So all of this kind of points to her being in Fontaine already. And just from the dialogue we got in the original Fatui trailer at the funeral of La Senora, she seems just very irritable, easily. So it makes sense that someone like the Knave would be the more diplomatic approach because she's better at negotiating and putting on the front. Sandroni doesn't seem like the type to be able to do this, fake it till you make it, which is why she does more behind the scenes stuff, which is probably why we didn't see on the Archon quest. Could she pop up in Fontaine still? Very likely. We'll talk about that in a second. But it makes sense that she would be more behind the scenes. I do think that she plays a big role in like manufacturing a lot of the weapons and mechanisms that the Fatui military use, enhancements. We see all these like Fatui goons all around Tevat. And they're all enhanced. I believe she plays a big part of that. And I do think she also probably plays a big part in the delusion factory that a lot of members use as well. I think she is key in these parts. And I do think her and Dodori probably collabed on a lot of different creations. Now, I don't know if you played this new world quest in 4.2 that just released. But in this world quest, to summarize what it's all about, there's a person that works for the Steambird or is the face of the Steambird. You know, the same place Charlotte works, the newspaper of Fontaine, Sir Arthur, and he's gone missing. So we get two agents, one's a Millazine and one Curve, who is a robot, suspect foul play. And it's more or less an investigation to see where Sir Arthur went. And long story short, to no one's surprise, the Fatui are involved. And there's a member named Jenks, who already says that he's the culprit and he works for a harbinger, an unnamed harbinger who he refuses to tell us who it is. He more or less tries to kill us and he destroys the robot Curve, who is acting as one of the agents trying to solve this case. Now of course everything works out in the end and this woman named Euphrasia, who also works at the Steambird, they say they recover Sir Arthur and Sir Arthur is actually just a mechanical pelican all along, which is kind of funny. And I guess somebody found Jank afterwards and after his little encounter with us, he got punished by said person who cut out his tongue. And they say that he looked like a like a like a modified mummified state, like he was lifeless. So it raises the question because people already suspected Sandrone to be this unknown harbinger that punished him. And apparently they found a note in his mouth apologizing to the Traveler in Paimon. So whoever wrote this note was apologizing to us, which is kind of weird. So this Fatui Harbinger was so pissed off at Jank for trying to kill us and for destroying Curve the robot that they had his tongue cut out, among other things. So why, if this was Sandrone, why would she do this? Well, it makes sense why she would want to kidnap Sir Arthur, him being a mechanical pelican, maybe has some intel or something that Fatui wanted to know. This wouldn't be for no reason. As for Jank, why she punished him, well, maybe for drawing the attention of the Traveler. If she's trying to stay low profile, the Traveler's the last person you need to start trouble with. She may have also been interested in this robot, and maybe has a soft spot for mechanical beings, and he just went and destroyed it. So that could also be just a little bit of, like, pettiness in there as well. 
She does seem cold-hearted, and it's not even surprising she would cut his tongue out as punishment. She could have probably turned him into a mechanical being as well, seeing as that he looks so lifeless now. I mean, Jank himself did say he was working under a Harbinger, and what other Harbinger makes more sense than Sandrone? Now, this isn't all the info we have to go off of, because we know all of the Harbingers are ancient, powerful beings that are at least 500 plus years old, with the exception of Tartalia. Now, with that said, how would Sandroni fit into this category? Well, there might actually be some backstory on her hidden in a world quest talking about that secret institute of Fontaine that I was talking about earlier at the beginning of the video. This photo, I don't know if you remember this picture, but the little girl in this photo, and these people are all really, really old, 500 plus years old. This little girl looks just like her. Now, who are these people? Well, it would take me 30 minutes to deeply explain this institute, but let me summarize it as quickly as I can. This secret institute of Fontaine was an organization in Fontaine which has established to raise orphans and the children of criminals has been involved in the lives of many of Fontaine's major figures during and after the cataclysm of 500 years ago. There have been many directors and leaders of this institution, but who we see in this photo are members of this institution and some of the orphans that they raised. And these orphans would go on to do pretty incredible things. You can see this institute's remnants buried under the sea in Fontaine. There are a lot of these ancient areas that you can get to by swimming underwater. You've probably already been there to most of them. The founder of this institute, Lyris, was in good relations with the original Hydro Arc on Nigeria, and it is said that he was a very good-natured Oceanid. And we know all Fontanians are Oceanids, like, in their primitive states. Now, long story short, this institute did a lot of the things outside the court of Fontaine and outside the law, kind of just like under the table, outside the jurisdiction, off the books, more or less. And they eventually dabbled in some connery and tech and technology and abyssal magic, all of that stuff. This institution is also responsible for founding the energy sources of Ocean and Numia, the Melozine, they created them. A lot of things you see in Fontaine came from this institution. The children of this photo would grow up to play a huge part in the cataclysm. And these four children in this photo would grow up to be important members of this institute and even fight in the cataclysm in some ways and impact a lot of the things that would happen. Now, the names of these children are Alain, or Alan, Marianne, Renee, and Jacob. And I think Sandrone, her real name is Marianne. Kind of goes with her codename too, the Marionette. Them having connections with Conria and being that old and having some form of like, not immortality, but we know that they dabbled with abyssal stuff and were able to prolong their lives. There's a whole big story here, so I, I do recommend go checking it out to get the full in-depth version. It would take like almost 40 minutes to explain it all, but that's more or less the simplified gist of it. Each Harbinger is connected to Conria in some way, which is why they all have the same goal. Conria and Celestia don't get along. Piero is a royal mage from Conria, and the Saritza went on this path and founded the Harbingers after what she witnessed there. So Conria and the Fatui are directly related and each Harbinger has their own reason for joining and their interests align. So her being Marianne would make sense and give her a connection to Conria and what happened at the Cataclysm. And if Conria and the Secret Institute were working together and collabing, perhaps that's where Sandroni learned a lot of what she did about automatons and mechanical engineering. Now, I will try to explain why I think she's Marianne. Marianne was an adoptive child alongside her brother Alain centuries ago and were raised in the Secret Institution by the director Elton. Later, all four of them, all four of these children, would join the Institute of Natural Philosophy and become members, like I talked about, and become members of the Marichutsi Phantom. They never really explain what happened to Marianne. Now that blue haired girl from the quest you might think is Marianne. And that could kill this whole theory. But we also got this photo where Marianne looks exactly like Sandroni. So, so perhaps a girl is like a creation of hers or some robot. We, we know that wouldn't be far fetched. We've seen that over and over again in Genshin. It can't just be a coincidence that they look alike. Their characteristics are so similar, with the hair color and the blue eyes, the hairstyle even, and I believe the Marianne that we see with the blue hair is a creation with some of her characteristics, with part of her memories and dreams. Now, each of the Harbingers have their own reasons for being alive as long as they are, so what would hers be? Well, there's a lot of them. First of all, experimenting with Conria. Who knows? 
anything's possible when you involve Conria. So maybe some magic or abyssal powers, who knows. Now another theory, and this is a popular one that's... One that we've all been saying since day one because you look at her constellation, it's the puppet on strings. Perhaps Sandroni is a puppet all along. And perhaps Sandroni is a puppet or clone or creation of Marianne this whole time. And that puppet would willingly join. Either that or she's a segment. Or maybe she's just been altered or modified to have prolonged life, similar to how Dodore can do this with many segments. Maybe Dodore himself helped out. Lend a hand, help her modify herself to live forever, or really, really long. Who knows? Because we know Dodore even modified Scatamooch and experimented on him a lot. And Sandroni came after Scatamooch being the seventh harbinger, so there's a lot of possibilities there as why she's alive this long. Having close connections with Conria and seeing firsthand what happened to them with the Heavenly Principles would give her motive to join the Fatui in their cause, believing in it. Perhaps her modifications are why she's su such a dull personality and she's so miserable and just plainly just mean. Maybe she doesn't have a personality anymore. She has no emotion. That's why she looks kind of lifeless and just like she'd tear your eyes out. Because maybe she's modified to the point where most of her humanity is gone. And that her only role now is to just do her part for the Harbingers. I'm not 100% sure because we haven't really seen Sandroni a whole lot, actually, but I'm just speculating here. That's what makes sense to me. She always seems engrossed in her research. Hmm, I wonder if those machines have anything to do with her. Anyway, I've only met her a few times, but every time she looked like she wanted to murder me. I have no idea what I possibly could have done to annoy her, though. She has a terrible personality and cares for nothing outside of her own research. But even with that amount of dedication, she still produced a copious amount of garbage and could only secure a ranking that's still one whole place beneath my own. How pitiful. There has been some leaked photos and concept arts of Sandroni as well, and she looks to be a robot or automaton. And that's maybe why she kidnapped Sir Arthur, that robot pelican. Maybe maybe she needed something or maybe she needed some intel about him or how he was created or some form of that. And maybe she's just Mary Ann modified to be a robot. And that's why she took it personally when Jenks killed that robot so she cut out his tongue. Maybe she's got a soft spot for androids and robots because she is one. That's always a possibility. Her constellation does kind of point towards this. But she could just be a regular human that has abyssal magic and has lived a long time too. Or slight modifications where she's part human, part not. Anything's possible. Take this concept art with a grain of salt because it could be fake. But it's interesting to say the least. Her constellation sort of hints at this. And the fact that she's alive this long and because clearly she's from Fontaine. I mean, come on. Where else would she be from? Natlin? I doubt it. That's the nation of war. Fontaine's filled with crazy inventions. It's the industrial capital of the world of Tevat. And Sandroni, everything about Fontaine perfectly fits her character arc and stereotype to a T. So how can this harbinger that we just hinted at in 4.2 in this new world quest that cut out Buddy's tongue not be Sandroni? And if I had to guess, because every time Genshin wraps up a main Archon quest, a few patches later we get another Archon quest leading into the next region. Kind of like we had in Sumeru with the Sinner and all of that. So I'm going to leave that at that. There's not really much more we can say about Sandroni that we don't already know. But it's cool to get hinted at, at least in some form. I'm a little disappointed we didn't see her in the main Archon quest. But maybe because she's a behind the scenes type character like I talked about. Now, if you want the more in-depth lore of all of this stuff, it's out there. I can even make videos if you guys want to see that stuff. But that lore will take... It'll be a long video. There's a lot to go over. So, I didn't really want to drag this video out to be, you know, 50 minutes long. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're as hyped for Sandroni as I am, leave a comment, like, subscribe. Helps me get in the algorithm, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this. And as always, we will see you all in the next one. Later.